Many people watching Eastern Europe at the moment are asking one question. Is Russia going to invade Ukraine? The answer is I don't know. I think we have to be on our guard and I think we have to make sure that um, deterrence prevails. The UK's most senior military officer doesn't know, but what everyone does know is that tension is rising. The EU and Russia are blaming each other for the migrant crisis in Belarus. There's a build-up of Russian troops near the border with Ukraine and the US is watching. We do continue to see um, unusual military activity uh, and the concentration of forces um, in Russia, but near uh, Ukrainian uh, borders, and uh, that remains concerning to us. Vladimir Putin calls all of this alarmist, but we know more broadly he does want to test the West. And to understand how and why he's doing that, well, Ukraine is the place to start. It used to be part of the Soviet Union, and even after independence, it remained an ally of Russia's. But the relationship frayed, and in 2014, Russia annexed Crimea and made a military incursion into eastern Ukraine in support of separatists. Putin knew this would bring condemnation, but he had his reasons. One of them we see in this article in July. He wrote, I said that Russians and Ukrainians were one people, a single whole, and maintaining historic connections is one motivator. Security is another. This map is from the Defence Alliance NATO. It shows many of its members marked in light blue, and you can see how close they are to Russia. Ukraine isn't in NATO, but it is a military ally, and all of this is too close for comfort for Putin. And the US sees his actions on the Ukrainian border connecting with the migrant crisis in Belarus that we're watching play out. This story is a very human drama, but the backdrop that's geopolitics. There's the BBC Steve Rosenberg in Belarus this week. This country was also once part of the Soviet Union, but unlike Ukraine, it remains an ally of Russia. Next door to Belarus is Poland. It's an EU member, and the European Union is accusing Belarus of encouraging migrants to use it as a route into the EU. Belarus denies this, but thousands have come, and in desperate conditions are trying to get into Poland. And for the Polish Prime Minister, this is all about Russia. This attack, which Lukashenko is conducting, has its mastermind in Moscow. The mastermind is President Putin. Now, others disagree with that, saying this is simply Belarus taking revenge for EU sanctions. And whether Russia is the mastermind or not, we can certainly say it's involved. Vladimir Putin spoken to Angela Merkel on the phone twice about it, perhaps mischievously, he's offering to mediate, which some say is the position he wants, that of power broker. And if that's one explanation for Putin's approach, Lithuania's president goes further. It is totally clear what the Lukashenko regime and their allies are seeking to test the unity of the West. Russia wouldn't agree with that, but it does have a track record of testing the West. And in the UK, some see another test coming. Is this going to be the moment where we are going to defend Ukraine's sovereignty or are we going to step back and allow Russia to advance once again, as it did in, in Crimea, as it did in, uh, uh, in Georgia as well? The current situation is being closely scrutinised and this isn't just about military might. To understand Putin's plans, we need to think about energy too. This is the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. It runs from Russia to Western Europe but it's not switched on yet. In fact, that's just been delayed by Germany. But here it is, going through the Baltic Sea. And when it's on, it'll increase Europe's reliance on Russian gas and reduce the volume of gas delivered via Ukraine. The UK believes that's a security concern. So does Ukraine. If Nord Stream 2 is launched and the status of Ukraine as a transit country is not guaranteed, then Ukraine becomes more vulnerable in terms of its security and more vulnerable to potential Russian aggressive actions. As we're hearing, most issues in this part of Europe have a security dimension. And if NATO is unimpressed with Russia's actions, the feeling's mutual. We need to consider that Western partners worsen the situation. They deliver modern, lethal weapons to Kiev and have provocative exercises in the Black Sea and other regions close to our borders. Putin sees a serious challenge in the West's military proximity. In part, he views his actions as defensive. And if that helps us understand what he's doing, so does this from April.
I hope no one will cross Russia's red line, but in each case we are the ones who will decide where the red line is. Here we see the more aggressive dimension to Putin's approach. He asserts that Russia will set the rules and enforce them. And this all connects to the broader goal of Putin's leadership, to establish Russia as a global force. To do that, Putin wants to test the limits of Western power. What we don't know is what he wants to happen next.